Thank you, Sandra, so much. Um, I'd like to end today by thanking Darren Walker for being the first person to truly listen to what I had to say. <laughs> to Elizabeth Alexander, who has been a constant source, source of inspiration, and to Margaret Morton, who has been steadfast in her support and invaluable guidance over the last year. Many thanks to Joel Wax and the Warhol Foundation as well. I'd also like to thank Thelma Golden, who has devoted her career to demonstrating how change and leaders can be created one person at a time. Her support as I developed the symposium was instrumental in giving me the validation and focus that I needed. We have grown accustomed to using the word aesthetic in a philosophical way to mean a critical reflection on art. But the real etymological core of the word aesthetic comes from the Greek, to perceive, to feel. Its opposite is anesthetic. So that if doctors anesthetize people so that they won't feel pain, then artists in turn must aestheticize them so that they can feel with engagement. Every artist present here today would rather speak to you about their life's work and their ideas, and would rather do a studio visit than educating you on the art world and its glaring omissions. To speak up as an artist and point out inequities to the very institutions we depend on for our careers requires enormous courage. And I'd like to thank every artist who made a public statement today. <laughs> There's deep importance to being seen. To be invisible in the very institutions that preserve visual culture and validate images is the ultimate erasure. Artists are instrumental in this conversation about the future of museums, both as stakeholders and agents of change. The expression call to action has become jaded and overused, and so it begs the question, what does doing something about inequity really look like? What does conceptually caring about ideas and making the leap to actually influencing our art world in measurable ways look like? How do we step outside of ourselves at every function, every museum boardroom, every celebratory art opening to ask who might have been omitted and who's invisible. The visibility of people of color in institutions that preserve material color, that preserve material culture matters because when it's absent, we become incapable of imagining the lives of others. Museums have much to learn from artists. Artists pay attention. Any act of social justice, any engagement in true equity is a deliberate willingness to pay close attention. Art transforms by replacing helplessness with agency. The museums and institutions that will have most relevance in 20 years will be the ones taking action now and following up the listening with accountability and action. The future of museums will be created by the handful of individuals who are not afraid to be insecure or sit with the discomfort of change because listening and learning is not passive, but means facing the messiness that is shared culture. At a recent Ford gathering, I spent some time talking to Dia Khan, a human rights activist and filmmaker. She kept saying, solidarity is free. It doesn't cost anything. It is available to us. More than anything else, my hope for the symposium is that it inspires much needed solidarity amongst Latinx as the intersection that can serve to create larger connections across race, non-binary gender, class, and all the warped mechanisms that have shaped our collective thinking for over 400 years, making us believe that we are all different in our separate silos. It is perhaps the biggest contribution that we can make as a rising ethnic group to be an example of what a future of true diversity and solidarity could look like and to inspire a model that defies the systems that force people of color to compete against one another for the few spaces of representation and access that are made meagerly available. I would like to dedicate today's symposium to anyone who has ever had to hyphenate their identity to explain who they are. To anyone who has ever been ordered to speak English when Spanish in this country has been spoken almost 100 years longer than English. To any American artist who has had to answer the question, what are you? And lastly, to Carmen Herrera, the H is silent, by the way, to Carmen Herrera, 
who, to put it into perspective, was born two years before Jacob Lawrence and remembers Langston Hughes visiting her family home in Havana. At 101, she opens her bittersweet career retrospective at the Whitney Museum of American Art tonight, showcasing groundbreaking work that she made in the 1950s. She is a reminder that we are a nation of immigrants, that the human condition is one of shared exile, and that excellence and artistic integrity, while it can be silenced or oppressed or postponed, always rises and always makes itself known with untouchable eloquence and powerful resilience. Thank you so much for being here today.